Today we're going to do a lab called Solubility Rules. The lab is about really creating your own solubility rules table that you have to memorize for your course. It is also about getting some experience with double replacement precipitate type of reactions and getting experience with a topic that I know is difficult for most of you, which is writing net ionic equations. So here is the table that is in your uh, lab description. And if you look across the top, you'll see anions provided by solutions of sodium solutions, such as sodium fluoride, sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and so on. Going down uh, the um, right side of the table, you will see cations provided by solution, nitrate solutions, such as silver nitrate, ammonium nitrate, magnesium nitrate, and so on. What we're going to do now is to mix one drop from each solution and see if we get a reaction. How do we know we get a reaction? Well, if the solution gets cloudy, that means we have produced a precipitate. And that is a reaction for which you will need to write a net ionic equation. If, on the other hand, the, uh, after mixing the two drops, the resultant drop remains clear, then you have a situation where the, um, the potential product is actually soluble in water. So that means there is no reaction and there is no net ionic to write. In the case, however, if there is uh, a, um, a, a cloudy uh, drop that results from the mixing of the two solutions, as I said earlier, that's a precipitate. But that also means that the uh, product that was formed is insol insoluble in water. That's why you have a precipitate. There is another possibility. The solution, the mixing of the two solutions could yield a drop that is slightly cloudy. That is an indication that the product form is slightly insoluble in water. Let's proceed now with the first potential reaction. I'm adding right now a drop of sodium fluoride. And to that, I will add a drop of the solution containing the silver ion. As you can see, the drop has remained clear. What does that mean? That means that the potential product, silver fluoride, is soluble in water, and no reaction has, to, has occurred. Let's go on to the chloride ion. And I will now add the silver ion to it. And notice what happened. Can you see that this solution is cloudy? Let me help you by seeing that by changing the background from white to black. Can you see the white precipitate? I want you to record, of course, that we have a precipitate, but also want you to record the color. So to speed the process up, what I'm going to do now is add drops of the silver ion containing solution across the uh, row, and then start adding drops of the anion solutions. And your job is to record what happens. And this would be the iodide ion being added. Are you noticing the change in color? That means we have had a reaction. Now, uh, let's see, this might be better to see with the white background, okay? And now we're going to add the sulfate ion. And let me put the white background under the chart, okay? So did we have a precipitate with a sulfate ion? What about the carbonate ion? There. Uh, 
Okay. So, just to help you through this process, it looks to me like we have precipitated in all mixtures except for the fluoride ion and the sulfate ion. So let's go on to the next cation, the ammonium ion. And now I will add the anions. I think uh, if you look across, it looks like they're all, I mean, there's no precipitate, there's no reaction. All the ammonium possible products are soluble in water, okay? So now we'll go on to the next cation, magnesium, and we'll add the fluoride ion. Let's see if you can see them with a black background. Now the calcium ion. Now here's what I want you to notice. Uh, first of all, I hope you can see that there are three precipitates here, but also, and maybe this is a little hard for you to see, look at the difference between this drop and the previous three. Those previous three definitely are clear. This looks slightly cloudy, but I can tell you by looking at it, I really don't see a precipitate. And that is an indication uh, that calcium fluoride is slightly soluble or slightly insoluble in water. So now we'll take care of st strontium. As you can see, it seems like we have precipita precipitates here, but not here. Okay, we'll proceed to barium. I want to point out that the um, calcium fluoride and strontium fluoride and barium fluoride could be are, are slightly cloudy uh, uh, drops, which means that the products are slightly soluble or insoluble in water. So now we go on to zinc. As you can see here, uh, we have uh, precipitates in the last three. Let's go on to copper. By the way, we don't put a spot on the iodide block simply because there is a reaction that does occur, but it's not a precipitate type of reaction. It's a redox reaction. And that one. Actually, that should have gone here. And actually, I put it on, I, I, I put the carbonate there as well, so I'm going to have to fix that. And I'm going to put the zinc sulfide combination on the outside here. As you can see, there is a precipitate form there as well. And this is the phosphate ion being added, which also forms a precipitate. Okay, we're down to the last three, aluminum. As you can see, the lead ion produces precipitates with everything except for the chloride. So here's the last one the iron-3 cation. Okay, so now we're done with the lab. Your job is to go to the instructions, answer the questions, create your own solubility rules table.